We know that the love of God is greater than whatever we can conceive. Yet this love is experienced in a very specific, concrete way through the humanity of Jesus. Such is the tender love of God. He regards us as his children and he is there to protect us, to guide us and to love us, to teach us how to walk, to give us our needs. But God's love is not just a tender love. It's also a long-suffering love. Those of us who are parents will know what long-suffering love is all about. Even when our children, they are naughty, they are rebellious, they go against us, they say all kinds of nasty things about us, parents will always love them, will always forgive them. Parents will suffer even rejection from their children. And God is like that. That was how Israel treated God, and we too in our own ways. God's love is always patient, waiting for us to repent. We are reminded of the prodigal son, the parable told by our Lord. That is how the Lord loves us always waiting for us to change and to repent. But most of all, we know that this love of God is also a forgiving love. When he was on the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Jesus sacrificed himself because he loves us. And that is why St. Paul would later on said, God would die for us, not because we are good and holy, but he died for us while we were still sinners. So, my dear brothers and sisters, when we understand that the heart of God is a heart of love, of mercy, of forgiveness, of patience, tolerance, then the work of evangelization would require us to be channels of God's mercy and compassion. Evangelization is really the work of proclaiming God's love and mercy, not just in words, but in our very life, in the works of mercy, in the works of charity. Of course, that is one aspect, but also in our own personal life, which is of equal importance. It is not just enough to do humanitarian works, but I think the most basic form of charity is towards our loved ones, towards our office colleagues, people that we see each day, people who are close to us. If our charity does not begin there, all the other charity we do will be just a performance. How could we be more loving and caring towards people who are so far away when our very people who live in our midst they don't hear words of kindness, of affirmation, of encouragement from us. Sometimes, if we are not careful, humanitarian words can just be an excuse not to love those at our backyard. And at the same time, it can also be an excuse to justify that we have done God's work because we have helped the poor. But sometimes I feel those who are really poor are those who are in our midst. Poor of love, poor from being understood. Most of our problems in life, you know, and unhappiness, they are all within our homes, in our offices. People that we really each day, these are the people who would hurt us deeply. The very people that rejected God were his own people, his own kind, not outsiders. So easy to love people who are outside of us. They'll be grateful, but the work of charity, of love, begins where we are. So how can we love in this manner? 
That is why it's very important for us to continue to contemplate on the love of God. It all depends on how much we are loved by God because it is not easy to love every day, every moment. That is why it's much more difficult to love our loved ones than to love someone that we see maybe once a month. To love someone who is close to us every day, it calls for a lot of patience, a lot of acceptance of the person's weakness, a lot of tolerance, a lot of strength to keep on believing in the person, even when the person has failed us. So let us pray that God's love will be in our hearts so that we too will have a heart of love, a heart of compassion, and a heart of forgiveness.